Hi there, welcome back. We are gonna learn within this lecture about application gateway and the application gateway will work very similar to the traditional load balancer and in fact we had a lesson on load balancing lesson. If you have not yet uh, completed it, that lesson, I encourage you to go and check out the Azure as your load balancing lecture that really helps you because some of those concepts are still applicable or on top of it it's going to work there are a few of the differences between the as your load balancer and application gateway and we're going to talk on that within this lecture as a first tip let's understand about application gateway as your application gateway is a web traffic load balancer which works on a layer 7 of and it will enables you to manage your traffic for your web applications. Whereas a traditional load balancer purely works for OSI layer 4 uh, for TCP or maybe uh, UDP port specific like route traffic based on the source and IP address based on the ports and destination it's gonna work. But whereas this is just for the applications, web applications. So that's a major difference uh, and application gateway can make routing decisions based on a traditional attribute of an HTTP request. Let's say an example, uh, you have a uh, you're trying to browse a contestor.com uh, which has the URL and if so if the URL is contestor.com forward slash images let's say this images are coming uh, then the request will route the traffic to a specific set of servers in this case uh, and known as the server uh, specific pool in this case it's the image server pool and uh, for example, if you're trying to browse contestwood.com slash videos, so application gateway knows that the user is coming from a, for, from a different URL altogether. So it will automatically send the traffic at the layer 7 because it understands that and it will uh, redirect to video server pool. Uh, so again, the pool is like, you know, you can have uh, multiple servers and you can combine as the one of the uh, pool. So we're going to talk on that in a minute, but for now, uh, you can understand that the request whatever the request is coming that can be uh, understand by the application gateway and it can, it can simply forward to the right server pool so that um, it can give the good experience for the end users in other way it's going to be fully routed the traffic to another uh, pool which is happening here either for the images or videos and with the optimized experience for the end users. Now let's understand about the application gateway features. So coming back to the features since the application gateway is a web traffic load balancer which will enable you to manage traffic to your web applications. So it has different components also like uh, you see here the uh, application uh, gateway specific front-end IP uh, which is going to be static IP uh, uh, which which will be interface for the your web application and also you will have very similar to the traditional load balancer very similar you also have the listeners and also the routing specific settings will be there so that it's gonna route back so let's talk about the features wise uh, these are the list of different features that are supported by application gateway let's say it, it can support the SSL TLS uh, termination and auto scaling for and also for the zone redundancy and static virtual IP as we talk and also WAF or web application firewall which will consist of different set of uh, rules that can protect your entire application uh, from different kind of attacks uh, like SQL injection attack or maybe cross-site scripting attacks all that can be prevented um, with the help of uh, your WAF specific configuration and also ingress uh, control for AKS for your Kubernetes services and URL based routing uh, and also the multiple site hosting when we talk about the multiple site hosting you can configure the routing based on a host name or a domain name for more than one application on the same application gateway and which can allow you to configure more effective 
efficient technology for your deployments by adding up to 100 and plus websites to one of the at least one application that's a web application gateway so each uh, web application gateway easily can support 100 plus websites and each or each website can be directed to its own backend pool for example in this case uh, you have a backend pool as one but if you have a multiple pools it's gonna divert to multiple pools too and also when it comes to the redirection for example if you're trying to browse on HTTP and that uh, protocol might not be secure so you can say configure to automatically redirect to HTTPS protocol so that uh, all the communication ensures that it's going to be secure in that way you can configure and that's one of the option for the redirection and also the session affinity uh, when it comes to the cookies based session affinity feature is really useful when the uh, when you wanted to a user a session to on the same server to maintain all the time or until the user's activity goes off you can still maintain that uh, session affinity so you can use the uh, gateway based cookies the application gateway can direct subsequent traffic from a user session to the same server for processing so this is a very important in cases where a session state is saved locally on the server for a user uh, session application gateway also supports WebSocket and HTTP by two traffic this is a traditional uh, port support for the port 80 and 443 that's HTTP and HTTPS based uh, protocol also you can reuse uh, the same TCP connection for multiple requests between your uh, for the request for the responses resulting in more uh, efficient way of utilizing uh, when it comes to the a protocol called WebSocket and HTTP by two traffic so basically this will allow you go for a duplex communication between your servers and your client uh, along with the TCP port communication so that's where you're gonna uh, use and uh, this will be very useful when you are going for the more interactive communication between the web servers and your clients uh, which can be used even bi-directional without need of uh, polling as it required in HTTP based implementations and also for the connection dining uh, when it comes to that if let's say you are planning some kind of you know back in pools go for a service updates so in that situation it's going to be very useful for using the connection dining um, this will enable you via backend HTTP and it can be applied to all of your backend pools uh, during the rule creation once you enable the specific uh, settings uh, the application gateway ensures all the deregistry uh, registering of the instances of the backend pool so you don't receive any new request while allowing existing requests so that you can go for actual maintenance of your uh, web application servers or the pool servers so you don't uh, need to worry about the uh, connection dining so, and when it comes to the customer pages let's see uh, with the help of application gateways you can actually create your customer pages instead of actually displaying the default error page of your HTTP or web application default uh, errors you can simply you know go for and uh, give a meaningful error message for the, your customers by showing some kind of you know branding or layout for your customers so that would um, give more value in terms of the end users when they are getting an error they can easily identify oh this is what some kind of you know, maintenance or some other thing can be added for your front end and for the rewrite HTTP headers and the URLs, what you can do is with this, you can go for your client and server to pass the additional information with the request of the response. Let's say uh, writing these things will give you, you know, major three different advantages like adding a security related header fields like uh, protection specific protocols like HSTS or X hyphen XS. Uh, protection all that can be added uh, for your packets or your HTTP headers uh, or you can remove even response header field that can uh, revolve sensitive information even you can go for uh, striping port information from X forwarder for headers so this will give you the support for the capability to add and remove or update your HTTP request and response headers uh, while the request and the response of your pack 
packets move between the client and the backend uh, ports so you can also rewrite your urls querying string or query string parameters or host name with uh, url rewritable or url path based routing and you can choose uh, to either routing request to one of the backend pool based on the original path um, that's what we actually uh, talked about like images and the videos also uh, in the previous slide and coming back to the sizing application gateway uh, can be configured with the standard uh, underscore v2 uh, sizing uh, that would actually most of the uh, most of these features are fully supported in the standard underscore vt or v2 uh, that's the size actually so that's where you can go for the sizing and the scaling or you can use the fixed size deployment so what happens is when you go for this uh, it actually talks about the average back end response size let's say uh, starting from the 6 kb to 100 kb and the Either you can go for the bandwidth of 7.5 Mbps or 13 Mbps or 50 Mbps based on your small, medium, large size of your application gateways uh, standard sizing. If you look at this diagram, uh, it tells how the application gateway would work uh, majorly, majorly different blocks which are involved. Let's say a user uh, browse this uh, application gateway. What happens is actually the user has to resolve that FQDN name to one uh, one of the IP address, and that IP address would be the front end IP address of your application gateway. So that would be taken care by your Azure DNS or your other DNS servers and then uh, it actually gives the IP address to the client and then the application gateway accepts the whatever the incoming traffic but here uh, it could be a suspicious activity or it can be any kind of an activity but it just accepts and then it checks for the logical entry to check whether the connection request is really a, a valid and it's gonna um, hand it over to what kind of you know, front-end IP address or the protocols and the port numbers and the connections that are actually coming from the application gateway and later point it actually hand overs to the listener so this is where the listener will actually check in the back end uh, whether that specific incoming traffic has a, a proper port and the rules are configured and uh, also if at all you have configured your web application firewall or in short we also called wap uh, what happens is wap uh, will uh, evaluate the rules whether the incoming request is valid or it could be a suspicious activity also uh, or it could be a security uh, threat so in that situation uh, it will check and uh, it will allow the action if the rule is matched it will send that to the backend pool if the rules are not matching it will simply either if you are put it putting as a detection mode so that's a type of mode where it will just only log it but if you put it as the uh, online mode where it's going to actually block that uh, prevention mode we call it as a prevention mode it's going to actually block that security threat and um, uh, that's how it's going to work so these are the uh, backend action what would happen actually so logically user to application gateway and from there it checks the listener has any of the configuration and also your application firewall that's a web application firewall will evaluate the rules and that would uh, send if the rules are matching it will send back to the required backend pools and that's where it's gonna work if no rules are matching it will put it into the uh, prevention mode and it will simply stop the uh, request further and when we go back with these things I just wanted to put it into, into the internal components that are that are actually involved or the components that are uh, that are required actually when we try to component when we try to configure our application gateway these are the components that are involved so it's good to know that the first one is a front-end IP that's your virtual IP or VIP for your uh, application gateway and also the listeners will work based on the ports if you are worked with the traditional load balancer you know that listener uh, this is quite similar uh, and ports or the port is that's, that's where the listener listens uh, for the client request and you can configure any kind of ports ranging from 1 to 65,502 or maybe a 65,199 based on the version 2 SQ or version 1 and coming back to the 
listener types there are two types one is a basic and the multi site so basic is the typically uh, it's just for the single domain site whereas it has a single dns mapping to one ip address of the your application gateway and this uh, listener configuration is required when you host a single site behind your application gateway whereas a multi site is uh, you have more than one or you can configure 100 and plus as we talked in the introduction of this application gateway and coming back to the uh, request for routing rules uh, this is where the rules comes uh, rules are a way to route back let's say for HTTP setting or custom probe or backend pool that's where you're going to configure your uh, rules when we say the backend pools it can be uh, one of the requests which is coming from the backend servers to solve the request backend pools will contain some kind of you know components like network card or maybe virtual machine scale sets or your public IPs or internal IPs or FQDN here or multi-tenant uh, backends such as your app services all that can be you know, configured here and uh, coming back to the health probe or custom probes so health probes are uh, by default an application gateway monitors the health of all the resources that are uh, connected for your backend pool and uh, if uh, if you if it finds any kind of you know unhealthy of your uh, backend pool resources it will report back uh, as the healthy or unhealthy based on the actual status thank you for listening all this introduction about application gateway and we are gonna learn the application gateway demo in the upcoming lecture and thank you once again uh, i hope you really enjoyed i know that it's taken a lot of time uh, for covering this entire topic but it actually feeds your entire basics thank you